Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. I want a sugar. I know you like Welcome to episode 221, Over Desire and Urges. Hello, hello, hello. How are you, my beautiful, beautiful friends? It's April 4th. Welcome to April. This is my month. My birthday is on April 10th. I love my birthday. (laughs) I don't know if you guys knew that about me, but I am very excited about this birthday because I'm 45, y'all. And I've been practicing my whole year theme is 45 and alive. Okay, so every day, 45 and alive, Angela shows up. (laughs) I've been lifting weights. Um, I try to get 10,000 steps in a day. I'm feeling very, very good. And spring is here, and I was just hiking in the woods this morning with the dogs, and I stopped to take pictures of the little buds blooming and the ferns. Like, when they sprout up out of the ground, they're like little coiled up balls, and then they kind of uncoil, and it's so cute. Um, and little purple violets, and all these beautiful things in the woods. I love the springtime. It could be, could it be? I love all the seasons, but spring is, is, there's just so much life happening, right? It's like, it's cold, and it's wintry, and, you know, depending on where you live, there's not a lot, a whole lot of life, like, in nature, and then you get to see it all come alive in the springtime, and I really, really love that, because, that's how we are too, right? Like we want to feel more alive. We want to do more things now that the weather is changing. Our days are longer. It's starting to warm up. And I want to encourage all of you guys to feel more alive all the time, right? That's why we talk about stopping over drinking and start living life. So I'm feeling really good about springtime. So last week I shared with you, I paneled and cued you guys to tell me your biggest struggles with um, stopping over drinking. And last week we talked about when, you know, when life feels complicated and how to handle that. And the runner up to that category is urges. So, so many of you wrote me back or commented that, You just can't handle the urges in the moment. Um, You know, you just fall into your automatic patterns and you don't acknowledging your desire or your urges for the alcohol, slowing your mind down, all that stuff. So I'm going to talk about that today. But first, I just want to sort of give you a refresher on urges and desire. So I use that word interchangeably um, when I'm coaching and in my um, educational aspects of what I do. Desire and urges. Urges is probably a more common term term for what we feel when we want to do something. Okay, so we have urges for all sorts of things. We have urges to pick up our phone and check our emails and, you know, check Facebook. Or um, we have urges to, you know, get up and get a drink in the middle of the afternoon. We have urges to, um, you know, go exercise. If you're a regular exercises, we have urges to pour a second cup of coffee. Like we have urges for so many things. Like we're driven to do things, right? And it kind of sometimes feels like we don't have control over that. We're like, I just want another cup of coffee or I just want another glass of wine, right? So urges are basically a feeling that gets us to take action, okay? And it can feel kind of urgent, like I got to get this right now. Or if you're answering, if you're working, right, and you just, you want to shut down for the day, but you're like, oh, I just got to get to this one last thing. Like it feels urgent, right? Or I got to, you've got this long run, running, running list of things in your head. And you're just like, I just got to, and it feels hurried, right? That's urging. That's urgent. And it's usually fueled by this feeling of an urge or a desire to get that thing done or to have that thing, okay? So that's sort of a definition on urges. Desire is very similar, but I describe that more as like a feeling that you have in your body. So I just keep sharing this example. So I'll share it here with you again. So when I was walking through Costco, this was before COVID, um, 
and they had all of the samples out. They actually have the samples out now. But before I was just, I wanted to be aware of my own desires. And so I was consciously, you know, sort of observing myself with my own desires for things so I could have some more language around it. And I noticed that I wanted the samples at Costco. And I can't remember exactly what kind of food it was, but it was probably everything. <laughs> but I remember like, oh, I'm having a desire for it. And I know the moment I sort of named it and described it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is desire. I want that, whatever it was. My mouth started watering. I felt sort of like this, almost like a pre-dopamine um, hit. It was like this pleasure feeling came over me and it felt good. Like I wouldn't describe it as a bad feeling at all. It felt pleasurable. Okay. So this desire. So think about like when you're young or even now, you know, you really want to have sex or something, or you really want that cupcake that you can't, you're waiting to have, you know, at the end of dinner or something like that. Right. And like just sitting with the desire for that, knowing that you probably might have it, but you're not having it right now. Or maybe you can't have it right now for some reason, that desire for it. I wouldn't describe that as negatively, would you? It's just kind of like, ooh, I want it. It feels like you're you're being um, pulled towards it. It's like sometimes our shoulders kind of like are forward and we our mouth might water. We might even get a, like a little sweaty in our palms. Our heart rate might increase. But it's not painful like the emotion of shame or sadness or grief right? It's definitely not painful. It's just, it's a desire. It's like, I just want it. <laughs> okay. And so that's sort of what, how I describe it. It's like a desire for something. And you can definitely tell in your body how you feel it, your mouth, mouth light water, you might notice some other physical aspects of it. Okay. And people who over drink and overeat have an over desire for their specific alcohol and specific foods that they like to overeat. Okay, I'm going to stick with alcohol here. And the over desire, it's like you really want it. So if you're trying to cut back and you feel like, oh, I really, really want that, it's an over desire because you've given in to that desire over and over and over again, probably for years. Like you have a thought, a, a drink would be nice right now. You might get a little ping of an urge and then you go answer that call and you fuel that desire for next time. So the next time your brain gives you a suggestion, you follow through on it, right? You're like, oh yeah, that sounds good right now. And then you go drink it. And then you create a very well-worn pathway that when you have a thought about alcohol, you follow through on it, right? So that's an over desire. And, and it's also over desire is also built on you drinking in response to how you're feeling. So if if you haven't been here for a while and this is the first podcast episode you're listening to, just bear with me here. Um, I'd recommend maybe starting with some other episodes, but hang on. Our feelings of, you know, at the end of the day, I, I use that example all the time of like anxiety or tired or overwhelmed or boredom or loneliness or anger or frustration. Like usually there's some negative feelings associated at the end of the day. And we want to drink to make ourselves feel better unconsciously. Okay. So say you're bored at the end of the day, you had a long day at work, you're feeling kind of tired already. And you don't have a lot going on that night and you're sitting in front of the TV and it just kind of feels boring. And you think, oh, I should have a glass of wine with this. This will make it more fun. Okay. And then you go and you get a glass of wine. That's you being in response to your feelings. Okay. And when you drink from that place, it's like throwing gasoline on the fire of desire. <laughs> throwing gasoline on the fire of desire. Okay. Okay. And when you do that repeatedly, you develop this over desire. It feels like you can't imagine not drinking, watching your show at night. I think a lot of people drink watch, while they watch The Bachelorette, right? <laughs> that comes up a lot. And so you've trained your brain to seek alcohol in that time because you've done it so many times. You can't imagine sitting there and being uncomfortable or bored watching The Bachelorette or whatever it is that you're watching 
um, without drinking. That's an over desire. It feels very difficult for you. To, you can't imagine doing that or that sounds difficult or you would worry about that being uncomfortable. That's an over desire, okay? People that don't drink in response to their feelings, meaning they don't use alcohol as a solution to boredom. They don't use alcohol as a solution to dealing with their tired and exhaustion at the end of the day. They don't use alcohol as a tool to manage their anxiety. People who don't do that don't have this over desire for alcohol. They can take it or leave it. They just have it occasionally. You know, they might have limits around it for themselves and it's just not a thing. Okay. They can go weeks at a time without it. You know, maybe there's an over drink occasionally, but it's nothing like where we all are, right? So your over desire is created by repetitive behaviors of you drinking in response to the desire and the urges and how you are feeling in that moment. Okay. And I think this is really important for you to understand as you look to tackle your urges and get a handle on how to be with your urges when you have this over desire for alcohol. Okay. You need to understand why it's there, what's happening in your brain and sort of, you know, so you can not be scared of it really. Like it's, there's nothing wrong with you. Your brains are all working normally if this is you, by the way. Your brain's programmed to um, seek pleasure, save energy, and avoid pain. So in these situations, we're kind of in pain, like in emotional pain, even if it's just boredom or um, maybe we're just feeling a little anxiety or something. Our brain associates that with being in pain. Okay, usually because of how we're thinking about our feelings. If we're thinking, I don't like feeling this way. This is a problem. I hate being bored. I hate feeling anxious. Then your brain's going to be like, ding, 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 ding. Ring that bell. <laughs> Cue in our desire for that alcohol. That works for you, right? This is all unconscious, by the way. And then you're like, yeah, it does work to take the edge off of that, right? And so you train your brain to go get the drink or whatever it is, all right? And the longer you're doing this, the, the years upon years in which you've had these behaviors, your desire just keeps building up over time, okay? You can probably notice, like maybe 20 years ago, you didn't have this over desire for alcohol. You can take it or leave it, right? And then it kind of like, you look at today and it's like, it's just kind of crept in over time, okay? Your desire has been building over time because of your response to your feelings and then choosing to drink, all right? And it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you and you can undo this over desire for alcohol by interrupting that and allowing yourself to be with your desire and your urges and not respond to it, okay? It's very important that you believe me on that. You absolutely can unwire your desire. Your desire, your over desire is a learned behavior. You were not born with this desire for alcohol. You've trained your brain to seek and desire alcohol because you've been drinking in response to how you feel. All right? And we can unwire that. We absolutely can. It's exactly how I changed my relationship with alcohol. Hundreds of women I've coached through this in my programs, you know, have no desire, have quit drinking, or totally like cut back by a lot because of understanding this and and doing what I'm telling you guys here about urges and desire. All right. So I'm going to answer some of your questions now around urges. I just wanted to give you that little background about why you have your over desire, sort of like what urges are, what desire feels like, so you cannot be scared of this stuff. Okay. I don't want you to be scared of your urges. So many people are, they have thoughts like, I can't handle this. I'm worried about my urges. I don't know. Like in all of that anxiety and worry and stress about urges is totally unnecessary. Desire and urges actually don't feel terrible at all when you can do what I'm suggesting that you do with them is when you notice they come in, you notice you have that desire. Sometimes you don't even notice you're having it, but you're like in the refrigerator, pulling out your wine or opening up that bottle of wine or pouring your cocktail, like you're mid action. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I hadn't planned a drink tonight. Oh, I recognize I have a desire for a drink, right? I'm in this behavior. I want a drink right now. And actually, if that's not on my plan, I want to work with this. I want to be with my desire. I want to breathe through this and process this desire so that I don't have so much desire in the future. So the more often you can interrupt that 
and not answer the call to your desire, your desire goes down and your over desire goes down. And you won't be thinking about it so much because your, your brain will motivate you to go do something else. And we're going to use this motivational triad, this primitive operating system to our advantage here because we're programmed to seek pleasure and avoid pain and save energy. So imagine you're wanting the alcohol. There's a lot of motivation behind that. It's prompting you to go get the alcohol because that's what it's done. Okay. It wants you to do the easiest thing. And that's usually just repeating what you've done in the past. Okay. And then when you don't do that and you allow yourself to be with that pleasure and that urge or that desire and that urge, and there's no reward on the other side, your brain isn't going to keep prompting you and energizing you to go do that thing because there's no payoff. Okay. And your brain doesn't want to do things that don't have a payoff because that's unnecessary energy, right? Because it's programmed to avoid pain, seek pleasure and save energy. And so if there's no pleasure, right? On the other side of that, it's going to go motivate you to go do something else. So when you are looking at solving your relationship with alcohol, this is very important to know because you want to actually start doing things that are actually good for you when you're feeling tired or stressed out or anxious and build tools around how to take care of yourself when you feel those feelings instead of turning to something like alcohol that doesn't actually help you feel better long in the long run, right? You feel tired, didn't sleep very well. Usually people snack and overeat when they overdrink. All the things, all the reasons why you want to cut back, right? It's not great. It's not a great tool um, for managing our lives and taking care of ourselves. So once you start, once you stop answering the call to drink, your brain's going to be like, all right, well, what else are we going to do then? How else, what else do we need? Maybe I just need to go to bed. Maybe I need to take a walk. Maybe I need to drink a glass of water. Maybe I just need to close my eyes and breathe for a couple minutes, right? All of those things are way better for you. And so when you start doing more of those things, your brain will prompt you to go do those things and not prompt you to go drink. You following me? Okay. So always when you want to, when you, when you notice that you're having desire, you just need to pause and name it. I am wanting this drink. I recognize I'm wanting this drink. Can I just allow that desire to be present? Can I breathe through it? What's happening in my body? How does this feel? And you're giving your brain an assignment in that moment to focus on something else besides the drinking. Okay. You're giving it a job basically to observe and tell you and report back to you what it feels like in your body when you have desire and an urge. And so that's what you want to practice. And while you're doing that, you're taking big, deep cleansing breaths. Okay. And so just be committed to doing that, to change your desire levels. And if you can do this consistently, your desires for alcohol will go down and you won't have an over drinking problem. You won't be thinking about it. You won't be motivated for it. So the more often you can be with your desire, the quicker you will reduce that desire for alcohol and therefore drink less. Okay. All right. So I'm going to answer some of the questions or the comments that I got and talk to each one of these around this topic. Okay. One of the ones says, when the urge hits, I do the five minute rule and weigh my options. Some days the pity party wins and I drink. So to me, that sounds like, first of all, it's awesome that you are noticing the urge in the first place. So like you're getting aware, which is the, always the first step. Like you're just you're recognizing it happening and you're like, okay, I'm going to give this five minutes. I can drink or I can sit with this urge. Okay. When you tell me that the pity party wins and I drink, that's because you're still up in your head. So I would recommend that you go into your body, do that assignment. Okay, brain. I know I recognize I'm having, you know, an urge to drink. I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. And in that five minutes, I'm not going to do the pity party, pity party in the battle about drinking or not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a job right now and you're going to go in and tell me how I'm feeling. Describe to me what I'm feeling in my body right now and I'm going to breathe through it. Okay. Usually the, the biggest obstacle here is learning how to redirect your mind into your body instead of staying up in your head. Okay. So that's what I would recommend that you do on that one. The other comment was definitely not sitting with an urge. I go right into effort mode with all the reasons I need and deserve a drink. Okay. So this is the same advice. You want to go into your body when you have the urge. 
you when you guys stay in your head and you battle, that is not really allowing your desire and your urges like I'm talking about. You're staying up in your head and that's exhausting. That's that, you know, holding that beach butter underwater type analogy. You're battling. You have this cognitive dissonance that's going on and that is like white knuckle energy and that sucks the energy right out of you and it's exhausting and when you're at the end of the day, usually that battle is lost because we've exhausted all of our extra resources to push through. Okay. And so what you want to do is like, okay, I'm not going to fight with myself right now. I'm going to go into my body and notice how this feels. And maybe also you need to get out of the kitchen. <laughs> okay. Like change your room that you're in, go outside, get some fresh air, but try to stop battling with in your, in your brain. Okay. The other comment was slowing my mind down enough to manage it. It feels so urgent in the moment. Yeah. So remember, nothing's an emergency. And what I like to tell people is you can always have it tomorrow, but we don't make in the moment decisions. When we make these in the moment decisions, that's why our desire is so high is because we're training our brain to be like, yeah, when you, when you give me the signal and have these thoughts, I answer to it. And so to reduce that, we don't want to make in the moment decisions. So go into your body, process and feel that. Um, if you have a hard time sitting with it, changing up your routine at the end of the day is also really helpful. Washing your face, getting some cozy pajamas on, grab your journal. Try to get your, don't just sit on the couch and suffer through it if that's where you normally drink. You know, like go change your environment if you need to. Um, but really just, you, you just have to be committed. Like I'm not drinking tonight and I'm not going to battle with this over my head in my head. So I can sit with and allow my desire, go into my body, breathe, process, meditate, journal, all of that stuff really, really helps. Okay. So the other challenge that was written was around urges is changing the complete and total habit of drinking every single evening, even when I've sworn I wasn't, or don't even really want to. So that's where you just need to interrupt yourself when you notice that you're like, okay, I'm not drinking tonight, even if you have a written plan, and you find yourself pouring that glass. We want to sort of remind ourselves in that moment that that wasn't on your plan and be willing to walk away from that and process your urges. Acknowledge that you want the drink, just like what I've been saying. Acknowledge that you want it, that you were considering having it, but right now you're going to just sit with the desire and practice that interruption. Okay. And like, that's probably what I would focus on versus not drinking is like, okay, tonight I'm just going to practice on allowing my urges and practicing feeling my desires and, and make that your goal instead of not drinking. Okay. So we're going to kind of back it up a little bit. We're going to get to the, the spot before you're actually pouring that glass. And that's going to be your new goal is just Instead of saying, I'm not going to drink tonight, tonight I'm going to focus on allowing my feelings and processing my desire, okay? And I promise you, if you do that on a regular basis, you will start to make some movement towards that. The other really good question or comment was, if I'm not drinking, I don't seem to have an issue with urges. The urges emerge when I start drinking. Breaking the habit and resisting the urge to drink beyond two glasses is tough. So that's a whole nother thing of urges that happen after you start drinking. <laughs> okay. So I don't have a lot of information on this comment, but I'm guessing, you know, maybe you had planned drinks, like you're, you're intentionally planning your drinks ahead of time and then you start drinking and then it's really hard to stop. If that's the case, I have a really good podcast episode that was done a while ago. It's called how to stop drinking at your planned amount. That's what you want to listen to, where I go deep into strategies around reducing your desire when you've had alcohol, um, you've already had alcohol on board, okay? And actually, if you're in my Alive AF program right now or in my Stop Over Drinking and Start Living program, I'm doing a workshop on this later this month. And if you want to join the Alive AF coaching program and get in on this live workshop where I'm going to be walking you through how to do this thing, Make sure you go to angelamasenic.com forward slash alive AF. We are opening the doors to that, um, I believe, at the time of this podcast being being published. So just keep hitting refresh <laughs> if it's not open yet. If you're on my email list, you'll know. And if you're in Wine Free Work Week, you will know when it's open too. 
okay? But I'm going to be doing a live workshop on a how to do this exact thing, and then I would reference you, if you can't make that workshop, to go listen to that podcast, How to Stop Drinking at Your Planned Amount, okay? And then the last one that I'm going to talk about today is this comment on trusting and remembering that your urges go away. And I love ending on this because urges are temporary. They don't last forever. And so often they are so short and we get ourselves so worked up about being with them or working through them that we don't give ourselves an opportunity. And they are so small in the grand scheme of things. And they're always temporary. Just like all of our feelings, right? Anger is temporary. Sadness is temporary. Happiness is temporary, right? All of our feelings are just chemical reactions in our body to what we're thinking, okay? When you have thoughts, your brain releases a chemical compound into your body that creates a vibration that you feel. And once that's sort of released and processed and worked through or you get distracted with another thought that creates another feeling, you're on to the next feeling. We can have a range of feelings throughout any given day. There's not one day that I'm happy all day long, right? I could be happy for a chunk of the day, but there's also a time where I'm annoyed, tired, um, bored, (laughs) like all of it, right? Um, Depending on what's happening with the kids or with work. I mean, we have a range of feelings all the time. And urges is just another little flavor of that. They are temporary. And if you can learn how to be with them and breathe through them, they go away. And they definitely go away when you stop answering them, okay? If you stop answering them and you don't drink in response to your feelings, you won't get urges that much around alcohol. It'll be like, it's not a big deal for you at all. That's how I am. I never have urges to drink, ever. I've completely eliminated that desire pathway because I don't drink anymore. And it's like I never drank before. It's like it's a problem that never exists. I never have to fight the urge. I never worry about being around alcohol. It is like, you know, it's like people who never smoke cigarettes. It's like not a thing for them, right? And that that's what it can be like for you if you work on allowing those urges and not responding to them. All right, my friends, I hope this helps you. I think if you can apply what I'm teaching you here, Right now, you will see a big movement towards your goals with alcohol and or food or whatever else you're trying to, behavior changes you're trying to make. All right, my friends, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.